Hello there, it is Jo from Minerva. Today we have a super quick tutorial, a little reminder of how to finish your seams and how to layer them out so that you get a really nice flush finish from the front, but from the inside you don't have lots of bulk fabric. To layer out seams, you need a really good pair of scissors. I used to use my dressmaking scissors, but then you can get some cutting errors and you can snip your fabric, especially on a curve or if you've got lots of detail um, and sleeves and different parts of your garment. So my, my top tip is to get a pair of small scissors so that you can handle the seam allowances more easily. The first type of seam that you can uh, reduce bulk on and layer out is on a straight seam. So you can take out both layers of the seam allowance. So if you're making a collar, then you might want to take both layers out because then you reduce the bulk in the collar. But sometimes you just need to take out one layer and quite often that's the layer with the interfacing on. So a seam allowance is normally 1.5 and you might think, well, why am I trimming it out, I could have cut a smaller piece. But the sew line is your finished garment measurements and this distance here is to avoid fraying and to give yourself some room for fitting. So you can layer out one piece of the fabric so that when you fold it over, you get much less bulk. So that would be good for um, for a buttonhole band. So this material is off my Lyra dress. So that's what I did on the button band of my Lyra dress. You can also trim out a little bit less and do a run and fell seam on the inside of your garment. So that is where you take out most of one seam allowance. So make sure it's pressed first and then you can fold over that wider seam allowance, push it away from the seam line and it covers the seam allowance. Pin it on top and this is all on the wrong side. And then when you sew along there, you'll see a row of top stitching from the right side. This sort of finish is really good for denim shirts or tailored shirts because you completely enclose the seams on the inside. So I've done it on the inside seam here. And actually with a little bit of patience, I've also done it on the sleeve head. So on the inside, I don't have any raw edges. It's all run and felled with the top stitching line showing as a feature on my classic shirt. Next, have a look at corners. The traditional way to get a sharp corner is to cut at 45 degrees across the end so that you're taking out the fabric bulk either side of the corner. Then when you turn it out, these will essentially make a right angle in the corner. If you need a bit more, you can trim it into a sort of arrow shape. So if you don't like chopping off the corner because you think it will make a weak point here for your sewing, you can make a really sharp corner by just folding the edge. You fold it down on one plane, fold it across on another plane and crease these. You can use your fingernail or a ruler and then turn it inside out. Just hold that little fold. Turn it out the right way. You can just work the corners out. A pin is quite good just for getting the last tiny little corner and try not to damage the fabric. So this is the one snipped off. And this is the one with the fold in it and it's much thicker and it's sort of self-supporting. So this one's floppier and a bit more bubbly, but this one is very strong. 
So it depends which area of your garment you are requiring a point and whether it needs to be quite stable or whether it can be thinned out. You might need to work a V shape on a neckline or something like that. So you sew the seam line and then snip to the point as far as you can go and then just take out a little more fabric in that arrow shape again. And that is going to be under a little bit of stress there. So you can put a little bit of fray stock glue just at the bottom. When that's dry, you can press it to the wrong side. On a curved edge, you can snip the layers. Again, sharp scissors are really key because you can get close to the stitching without actually snipping through it. So this is useful if you're making princess seams on the front of a dress and you want the fabric to be able to splay out and the seam allowance then has more room to move meaning you can press on your tailor's ham with a smooth curved line. So that's for a concave curve. On a convex curve, you've got too much fabric. So when you try and turn that out, you'll have like bunching of fabric behind your seam line. So on this one, you want to remove some of the fabric. So you can cut little V stitches. You can just cut a few along the line or you can cut quite a few out. It depends how strong your curve is. So now when you press that out this fabric has some room behind. That's how you trim a concave curve or a convex curve. So there are the two corners. Here's the concave and convex curve trimmings and a V shape. Don't forget as well, we have the run and fell seam trimmed out. I hope that's helped. Maybe there's one or two there that you've not used before. They really do help to make sure that when you press your garments that you'll get an absolutely great finish, especially if you've got collar tips then you can do that technique where you cut off the corner and then take it into an arrow shape. You can also do the same technique where you take off one layer of the seam, the interface layer, so that you get um, a nice flat collar without too much bulk. We would love to see what you've made, so do make an account with us and head over to Minerva. You can check out inspirational makes, sewing tutorials, tips and tricks. You can browse beautiful fabrics and we would love to see you there. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.